So apparently it's uh, about 100 degrees outside. And it's hailing. I saw it on Facebook that everyone was talking about it, that I'd come out of here and shoot some video of it. It's not even that cloudy. Feels like really gross out here though. So, I gotta ship something in the mail right now. So, we're gonna do that. There we go. Yeah. All right, here we go. Got the little one strapped in. Got our masks. And we're going to the post office. There's a lot of weird things going on with the post office right now. A lot of people reporting they're not getting their mail. And so, we're gonna see if the post office is even open. And then if it's not, that's a problem because then we gotta figure out how my wife's supposed to ship her candles. It's still disgustingly hot. Do you guys see that? Do you guys see how hot it is? It's 112 degrees. It feels disgusting outside. Like disgustingly hot. My air conditioner in my car is struggling to keep it cooling. All right, so let's see. We're about to pull in to the post office. Have any of you guys uh, had to deal with any of the postal stuff that's going on right now? Has it affected you in any way? Let me know in the comments below. Like I said, I, I thought today, if anything, today was going to be closed from what I see, but it doesn't seem to be closed. Well, the gate looks open, so I'm assuming trucks are getting in and out. And so we'll see you later today if uh, our mail comes in, and then I guess we'll have a better idea if it's affecting us then or not. So it was open and I guess uh, we're not being affected by it, but I'm still seeing a lot of people in the local groups saying that they're not getting their packages and stuff like that, or they're not getting their daily mail. So I'm not really sure what the issue is, but it is open. We were able to do the package and now I promised the little one, if she wasn't acting up, she can get a chocolate milk box from Starbucks. So that's where we're on our way to go. Holy cow, Starbucks is freaking packed. It wraps around entire parking lot. Hi, welcome to Starbucks. Can I get any food service for you today? Can I get a uh, venti matcha green tea? Uh, venti matcha green tea ice? Yeah. Yeah, let me get that for you. And do you guys have any of the chocolate milk boxes? We do have them. Okay, I'll take one of those too. Okay. And what cake pops do you guys have? Cake pops, we have chocolate birthday cake, cookie dough. I'll take the chocolate one. A chocolate one? Yeah. That's fine. Is that all for you today? That'll be it. Awesome. It'll be eight ninety five today. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. What does that do? Uh, it gives you a free drink. A free drink? Yeah, so the one. Free, yeah. Oh, sure, I'll use that. All right, so 420. Thank you very much. Have a good day. You too. All right, now that that's out of the way, I didn't mean to get political with bringing up the post office or anything like that. I'm not necessarily a very political person. When it comes to basic rights for people, sure. Everyone should be given the same opportunities. Everyone should at least be presented with the same opportunities. Whether you work to, to make those opportunities better is on you, but I think the opportunity should be equal for everybody. And that's about as far as I'll get into that. Uh, we celebrated my daughter's birthday over the weekend. We went to the beach.
really fun. She had a good time. She had uh, surrounded by people that loved her and were gifting her things and treating her amazingly. And I'm ever so grateful to everybody that does that. And people that couldn't come out to make it, she was getting gifts all week long. My cousin invited us over to her house. They threw like a party for her and they made it real special for her and it was really awesome. For me, it's just one of the most amazing things I'll probably ever witness in my life. It's to see this little being you made, this little being right there that's drinking up her chocolate milk and people just immediately loving her and wanting the best for her and taking care of her. I can never thank people enough for treating my daughter with so much love and so it's the best thing you can see as a parent really honestly probably the hardest thing for me to do to learn as a parent being less selfish i don't necessarily mean that in a sense of like maliciousness or like i don't like sharing my food or stuff like that selfish in like how much i take into consideration someone else oh, that was the hardest thing for me because growing up i always just thought about what i wanted to do i only worried about what was on my mind to give you an example is like if I was told to take the trash out, if I didn't see it, I probably would never remember. And I didn't remember half the time because I would never really be in the kitchen. I'd either be upstairs just to go to sleep and then be out all the rest of the day. That caused me a lot of issue. You know, that selfish mentality, as I was explaining, not necessarily in a malicious way, if it didn't co align with what I was doing, I didn't remember it. I didn't put it in a level of, of importance in my mind to have to re constantly remember to do it. I was in trouble a lot of my life a lot of my teenage life because of situations like that where I was told to do something and I wouldn't do it because again not because I wanted to be a jerk not because I wanted to be a bad kid not because I didn't want to listen but because I didn't think about it wasn't on my on my personal to-do list so I didn't think I didn't remember and so that was another thing I had to really learn to get rid of as an adult with a child you know I still struggle with it I get really consumed in working or doing the things I'm trying to do. It really stressed me out because I had no no options. Because she would scream her head off. She wouldn't nap, she hated napping. It was really hard. I, I could not do it when she was a newborn. She was extremely hard to take care of. It was a rude awakening for me. I can't do what I wanna do anymore. I have to do what this little thing wants to do. And so she really hit me real hard. We're doing what I wanna do today. I want to eat. I'm going to crap my pants. I need a bath. It hit me like a ton of bricks to learn that. And now that she's four years old and she can communicate, things are a lot easier. For me, as she gets older, it's getting easier and easier to raise her, especially now that we have this system. I can leave her in her bedroom while I get stuff done. And I've learned to teach myself to check on her every 10 or 15 minutes. I'll get work done. I'll get to a point where I finish designing something or I finish putting this video together for a client. I'll just get up, I'll go check on her. Hey, are you okay? Do you need to use the restroom? Do you, are you hungry? Do you need juice or anything like that? And she'll answer me, no, I'm fine dad. Or yeah, I'll take some juice. And then I go get it for her. And that's kind of our system. It's the way that I can work get work done and be able to be a father to her. And a lot of people may not like it, may not agree with it. People have voiced their opinions that I need to watch her like a hawk or I need to play with her more. You know, I struggle with my own problems. I have a very short attention span. It's not fair to her, but I can really only do anything with her for 20 minutes tops. After that, I'm essentially like over kid playing, which is weird. I've gotten into the habit of switching things up when I do play with her. Play on the tablet together for 10 or 15 minutes. We'll switch over to coloring or drawing for 15 minutes. We'll switch over to watching some of her shows for 10 or 15 minutes. That's how I've tackled my short attention span problem to being able to, to play with her a lot more throughout the day, which is really unfortunate because now she has a short attention span. And I don't know if she actually does or if she's just grown that habit because of me. Now, even with anyone else, she can't do anything for more than 10 or 15 minutes. It's something I would wanna to talk to a psychologist or something to see if I created that pattern in her and if someone maybe created that pattern in me or if it's just if she actually has a short attention span. Either way, that's just how I've learned to deal with it. I think there isn't really a linear way to raise children correctly. I think you just gotta try your best and do what works for you. I try and get work done and then check on her every 15 minutes and do uh, something with her for 15 minutes and then go back to work. And that's pretty much how my day goes. That's what works for me. What are some of the things you have to deal with? What were some of the rude awakenings you had when you first became a parent and brought your child home? 
What are the things that you're dealing with? Anything like that? Um, definitely let me know. Let me know how you, if you guys have short attention spans too, what are some creative ways that you help um, yourself engage with your children more throughout the day? Let me know down in the comments. I'm really interested to hear what you guys have to say.